So it is fitting that we bring such a fine person, such a personality, Dr. William H. Haling, to this particular place and pulpit. Take a moment to reflect, if you will, on his life. You will find more detail in your worship program today. But listen for a moment to the trajectory of his vocation. He was born in New Jersey. He was admitted at a very young age to Boston University, an academician and an athlete both. He then began medical school at Howard University at the tender age of 19 years old. He served in Korea, earning a bronze star. And then he returned home to practice medicine, to practice medicine, delivering more than 8,000 little boys and girls over several decades. Then his practice was amplified, as sometimes happens in the later decades, by God's grace, amplified in teaching as he taught another generation. His vocation to healing reached out to meet the needs of others, and with others, he founded an organization to improve life called the Organization of 100 Black Men. Dr. Haling's medical care, his teaching, his leadership, his mentoring continue, they continue to this day, to this hour, to this place in his per person as he now graciously comes to the historic pulpit of Marsh Chapel. Will you join me as we offer our warm welcome to Dr. William H. Haley. Good morning. And thank you for such a warm welcome. Thank you, Dr. Hill, for your kind introduction. And I'd like to thank my classmate, Esther Hopkins, who's finishing up 23 years as a trustee at Boston University. And the university trustees for the invitation to join your commencement exercises this morning. It is such a great honor for me to be here on this occasion because my education and experiences at Boston University gave me a foundation for creating a rewarding, productive, and meaningful life. Boston University prepared me to recognize my strengths as well as my weaknesses. I've learned many things during my 82 years. I've practiced medicine for over 55 years, developed decent golf and tennis games, delivered over 8,000 babies, as Dr. Hill alluded to, have memberships in many organizations, both professional and social. I have a wonderful wife, daughters, grandchildren, a great brother who was a former Tuskegee Airman and his family. Glad to have them here today with me, all of whom I'm extremely proud. But the real joy I feel today comes from being a mentor to young people, helping them navigate through this complex world. As a child, I was fortunate to have many mentors during my life, including my parents. No one can live a fulfilled life or even survive without the help of others. I believe that each of us has the capability to make a difference in solving the human problems that surround us. When I was 14 years of age, my father died, and it was a real hardship for my mother, brother, and me. But I was fortunate to have many mentors and family and several family friends who became my mentors. In 1943, I enrolled at Boston University as a pre-med student. I also made the varsity basketball team, which took up a large part of my time, so much time that I decided to withdraw from my organic chemistry class <laughs> because basketball was more fun. Fortunately for me, I received a stern letter from a family friend and physician who asked me, are you going to be a basketball player or a doctor? I understood the implications of his question 
and dropped basketball and concentrated on my pre-med subjects. While I was a decent player, I was not a superstar and had little chance of making the NBA. He reminded me of this fact. <clears throat> so after two years at Boston University, <clears throat> excuse me, I was accepted as a medical student at Howard University and graduated at the age of 23. <clears throat> During my medical school years, I had many mentors <clears throat> who helped guide my choices and showed me a path. And as I reflect on those people who influenced my life, I realize that the real quality of life is measured by the extent to which you have a positive impact on someone or on some worthy cause. As a physician specializing in obstetrics and gynecology for over 30, 55 years, I realized that delivering healthy babies and keeping mothers healthy was my occupation. But I began to realize that my real passion was helping young people grow into productive and compassionate leaders. Mentoring newly trained physicians was always rewarding to me. But helping inner city youth has become my passion, particularly those youth who have no role models in their lives. I'm the founding president of the 100 Black Men of America, a civic organization that implements programs designed to improve the quality of life for African Americans and other minorities. Our focus is to help young people. Today, the organization has grown from six chapters to over 105 chapters, with more than 10,000 members across the country. Mentoring is the cornerstone of what the 100 brings to the community by guiding youth in life's experiences, fostering positive self-perception, self-respect, encouraging and excellence in education, and the pursuit of positive life goals. I don't know if you remember the movie, Pay It Forward. If not, rent it and watch it. The premise is that if each of us can help just one person who is less fortunate and request that whomever we help would in turn help someone else, I believe we would transform our world and our communities into a better place. I feel that there are three essential areas in life that must be kept in balance, the personal, the professional and the spiritual. The key is to mesh these three components to achieve excellence. Many achieve professional excellence but lack the personal excellence in their lives, and this can lead to difficulties within their family lives and relationships. The spiritual keeps you anchored during life's hardships and helps restore your faith. Having achieved a college education, you now have a springboard to a fulfilling life for education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. So my main message to you is summed up in five points. One, average is just not good enough. The pursuit of excellence must be maintained. Even if you never achieve your ideals, always be in pursuit of excellence. Two, don't compare your efforts with others. Instead, compare your efforts with only the best of which you are capable. Three, never stop reading, never stop studying, never stop learning. Education, like success, is a journey, not a destination. Cherish and nourish your friendships you've made here. Years from now, you may forget many things, but there are a few things that you will remember. You will remember a few wonderful teachers who truly inspired and stimulated you a few great parties and celebrations, but mostly the friendships you've made here. Stay in touch with your friends and cherish those relationships. Five, you will, be, you will make errors in some of your decisions in life, but you must never err in your purpose and resolve. Maintain the requisite faith to do your job well with a combination of stamina, enthusiasm, and determination and dedication that will demonstrate that you are truly committed to help others. You will come to realize that trust and respect are not given in perpetuity, but must be earned day by day. Finally, as you leave this great university, keep in mind that you now possess the knowledge and tools to help another human being who needs some guidance and who may not have a role model. Become a mentor to someone. You have the power to make a difference. 
As you reflect on your years at BU, remember that the greatness of an institution is judged not by its library or its endowment, but by the contributions of the men and women who go forth from it, the service they render to others, and the humility with which they serve. Congratulations and good luck.